Alright guys, welcome back. Now it's time to talk about capacitors. Why some guys are adding these into their multi routers the purpose behind it, the logic, myths, the rumors, everything. I recently made that video on how to remove vibrations from your gyro sensors because of, well, race flight and the Revolt flight controller. Because the Revolt has an incredibly sensitive uh, gyro sensor. And because of this, a lot of guys started talking about it recently but people have been removing vibrations from their gyro for a very long time. It just wasn't talked about as often as it is now. Well, this is a very similar situation. Guys have been adding capacitors into their multi rivers for a very long time. It just hasn't really been talked about as often as it does now because of, well, I'm going to say race flight. Well, the people from race flight bringing it to people's attention. So where to begin? All right. We had one shot 125 ESCs, and if you've ever been into the BL Heli Suite, the, you would have noticed the menu was a little bit different. You had a lot more options. And one of the options was uh, the ability to turn the active braking on and off. If you're unsure of what I'm talking about, just watch the last video that, that I made. I will leave a link to it in the description below. And I actually give you a, a visual demonstration of what it looks like with the braking turn on and off. And then when multi-shot, or I should say BL Heli S ESCs came around, uh, it was just always turned on. The menu didn't give you an option to turn it off. I'm not trying to make it sound like a bad thing. It's a good thing because with your motors stopping themselves, and they decrease speed almost instantly, and this is great for, especially when you're racing and freestyle flying because uh, say you're doing some freestyle flying and you go over a tree, but you want to decrease your altitude more quickly. Well, if the motors stop, then it's going to fall faster, where if the motors slowly spin to a stop, then you will decrease speed at a slower rate. The one disadvantage to doing this, though, is you will get voltage spikes in your power system. I was going to say this was somewhat of a theory, but it's not a theory. It's actually been proven. There are voltage spikes whenever the motors decrease speed. It makes the voltage jump up higher and it goes back into the system, which is tied, you know, you have your flight controller, video transmitter, camera, and maybe a few, other, a few other things tied into the system. And if these spikes become so great, it can actually damage or fry something on your flight controller or any other component. And that is where the capacitors come in. The purpose of the capacitor is to, uh, I guess the best analogy I can use is, say, whenever you're going full throttle and then you just you just stop throttle completely. You kill your throttle and then your ESCs will uh, just picture them sending like a tidal wave of water back to your flight controller and video transmitter everything else and that would damage everything unless you had maybe a type of sponge to soak up the water. The capacitor is going to be this imaginary sponge. This is what will soak up those uh, increased uh, voltages. I know that's a horrible analogy, but that's the best I can do. So this is going to soak up everything that you don't want going to the flight controller and everything else. As far as what size do you need and other specifications, um, everyone has a different opinion on this. The only reason I'm using this one right here is because this is what the guys from Race Flight have specifically recommended. Uh, now, I didn't just go out and buy this just because they recommend this. I actually have many different capacitors here because I'm, I build other things other than multi rotors. So I just had this laying around. But this is the specific one that they recommend. And it is 470 microfarads with a voltage rating of 35 volts. And you want to make sure you have low ESR, which I'm not even sure if it's written on this. Oh, actually it is right there. Low ESR. I will leave you a link to this in the description below if you are interested in getting this. Uh, but like I said, you can use different sizes. Um, I would say the bigger it is, the more effective it will be. But let's go back to the question of well, how effective do they have to be? Because uh, I myself and many other people don't use capacitors. I know about the capacitors, I just choose not to use them. And I'm sure a lot of you, whether you did or did not know about the capacitors, have not used them and you haven't had anything fry. So that raises the question of, uh, do you really even need this? I guess what I'm really trying to say is, uh, if you don't think you need one, you still can add one in just for that extra security. Sometimes it's better to be safe than sorry. 
But I also will say, if you keep watching the video towards the end, I will show you how I have my build set up to where I can uh, not use a capacitor, but I still have protection. Like I said, it's not a myth or a rumor. It has been proven true. But personally, I have never had anything fry. I am aware of the problem, and if something does fry, then I'm not going to blame it on anything but myself for not using a capacitor, but I'm okay with that. Now let's talk about how to add this into your system should you want to. Well, first let's determine what's positive and negative. Uh, with many other electronic devices, the longer leg is positive and the shorter leg is negative. Also, with capacitors you actually have two different ways of knowing. This little strip right here with the negative symbols on it, that is your negative lead. How does it go into your system? You just want to place it anywhere where it's getting the full voltage of the battery, meaning uh, this PDB I have here actually has a 12 volt and 5 volt regulators uh, so I would not want to put it on those regulators. So I could place it right on top of my battery leads or share the pad with them or I could, uh, you know, our ESCs are going to these positive and negative pads. I could add it into one of those ESC pads and on this flight controller that's really my only options. I don't have any pins or anything like that coming from it. So real quick, let me put this in and I'll give you an idea of what it looks like. Okay, now I have it in place. Uh, I just place it right on top of my battery leads. That seemed to be the easiest way to go. And I also you know, mounted it at an angle so it's not in the way of anything, especially not my main battery leads. Now once I mount my flight controller back on top, you want to make sure that it's not going to contact anything like the bottom side of your flight controller or uh, anything else. And you could also secure it with some electrical tape or, you know, anything like that. Just make sure it doesn't move around. Like I said, you can use a smaller one or you could even use a larger one. Uh, it all depends on you, how much protection you think you need. Like I said, the bigger the better. But then again, I've never had anything fry without using one at all. But that's completely up to you. I'm just, you know, giving you guys some information. Now, what do I personally do since I said I am aware of this problem but I don't use a capacitor? Well on the slight chance that your flight controller has a built-in voltage regulator so you just supply direct LiPo power to it and it you know it regulates itself and also your video transmitter can be powered from you know directly off your PDB as well. What I do is I have this LC filter here this LC filter is being powered directly off my PDB, getting the full voltage of the battery, no step downs or anything like that. Then coming off of that, I have that uh, powering my flight controllers as well as powering my video transmitters. And on this specific build, I mean uh, powering the camera off the flight controller, but uh, on other builds I'd either do it that way or some of my video transmitters has the 5 volt power you know voltage regulator built in so I power the camera off of that but the point that I'm trying to make is by powering the LC filter right off the PDB and then everything else is powered off the LC filter this completely separates my flight controller video transmitter and camera from the ESC's so if I were to get any of these harmful voltage spikes and if anything were to fry the only thing that can fry is the LC filter Doing it this way, this is not complete protection. I mean, it, it is protection, but it's not going to completely keep everything from frying like a uh, capacitor would do. This method is basically me saying, well, if anything is going to fry, it's going to be this LC filter, and I buy these for $2.50. So I will happily let one of these fry and just replace it with another one. That's never happened, but you know, that's worst case scenario. I'm out of $2.50. And that wraps this video up. If you enjoyed this, if you could, please give me a like. Look in the description below. Like I said, I will leave you uh, some links to some of these capacitors as well as links to other videos. Thanks for watching, and I will see you again soon.